Widowed Mrs. Eleanor walked into the bank to claim her long-awaited inheritance. The banker, known for his arrogance, couldn't contain his laughter as he looked at her tattered clothes and worn-out shoes. However, when Eleanor opened the old, weathered envelope, a sight inside made the banker's face turn pale. What he saw in that envelope would change everything, and the color drained from his face as he realized the incredible secret it held. But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Eleanor felt lost and alone after losing her husband. They had been together for decades, spending almost every day of their lives with each other. There was one envelope in question that had been occupying her brain for the past couple of weeks. She sat down at her dining room table and carefully opened the letter. Her eyes grew wide with shock as she read her husband had left her something in his inheritance. When Eleanor's husband was still alive, they didn't have a lot of money. They lived a humble life with just enough money to get by. So when her husband passed, Eleanor figured there wouldn't be much to pass on to her, as they had always shared a bank account, and she knew how much money was on there. Confused by this sudden letter, Eleanor decided to go to the bank. The bank was busy, and there was a huge line at the reception. Eleanor quickly joined the line, hoping the wait wouldn't be too long. Her legs weren't the youngest anymore, and she didn't bring her cane with her. Minutes ticked by and the line wasn't getting shorter. Eleanor curiously looked past the people in front and was shocked to see the reason why. The banker was simply too busy with his phone. He wasn't paying any attention to the people in line. Slowly, people began to spread out, moving to other lines that did move. Eleanor was now second in line, and when the person in front of her also failed to get the banker's attention, they walked away as well. Hello, good afternoon, sir, Eleanor said. I have a strange question and was hoping if you could help me. The banker gave no kick to Eleanor's presence, so she tried something else. She slammed the letter onto the desk. My husband died and he left me something in his will. I don't know what it is, so I need your help now. The banker suddenly looked up from his phone. His eyes scanned Eleanor from top to bottom, and a smirk began to form on his face. What is it? Eleanor asked. Now the banker really began to laugh. I'm sorry, he laughed. But I'm sure whatever your husband left you isn't worth your time, and it sure isn't worth my time. Go home. Eleanor felt her blood boil. I can get you fired, you know, she said, while sternly keeping eye contact with the banker. The banker sighed. Fine, I'll see what I can do. He picked the letter up and began to read. Eleanor watched as his facial expression changed while reading the handwritten note her husband had written for her. Please wait over there, the banker said, as he pointed Eleanor to an area with couches and magazines. I'll have to look in the back for you. It will take a moment. Eleanor nodded. Thank you, she said, with a kind smile on her face. They were all patiently waiting, but as time ticked by, they all got their turn. Eleanor spotted the banker, Mr. Hadley, through the glass wall his hands trembling as they held what Eleanor immediately recognized as her own letter, the blue tint of the paper, unmistakable. Looking worried, his shock told Eleanor that her husband had left her something big, and the banker didn't know how to handle it. Her mind raced with questions. What could be so important that it required such immediate attention? Walking through the bank's back offices, Eleanor heard snippets of hushed voices. Must be handled delicately, one said. Another asked, are the papers in order? She felt like she was in a maze, surrounded by secrets on all sides. The bank manager approached, having noticed her earlier distress. Can I help? He asked with gentle concern. Eleanor was surprised. The manager's offer felt like a lifeline. Inside the cozy confines of the manager's office, Eleanor felt a wave of relief. She sat down across from the manager and took a deep breath before speaking. The confusion was clear in her voice as she described the banker's worried expression and the talk of fortunes that had caught her off guard. I see why you're concerned, he said after she finished. Let me assure you we'll get to the bottom of this. When the manager came back, his whole face looked different. Where he'd been open and kind before, 
Now he was serious and careful. Mrs. Eleanor, he started. There's something about your husband's account that we need to talk about. It seems your husband set this up a long time ago with specific rules for when it was to be given to you. He told her the manager spoke of keeping things quiet and the need to handle everything by the book. We have to take care of some legal stuff first, he said. It's clear he wanted to make sure you were taken care of even after he was gone. The manager finished, sliding a small brass key across his desk towards Eleanor. This was your husband's way of speaking to you one last time, he said softly. The key was to a safety deposit box, one he had kept private. In the quiet hum of the vault, Eleanor inserted the key into the safety deposit box. As the lock clicked open, she held her breath. Inside, there were papers, jewelry, and old photographs, each item a chapter of their life together now revealed. Eleanor unfolded the letters carefully, as if they were fragile leaves from an autumn gone by. Her husband's writing, steady and familiar, spoke of deep love and heartfelt apologies. Each letter was a confession, a memory, a piece of his soul laid bare. With each word, she felt him with her, whispering stories and secrets kept silent for too long. The last envelope Eleanor opened contained not only a letter, but also a small key with an address. Her husband's note explained this key led to a place that held even more of his love for her. With a mix of excitement and solemnity, Eleanor prepared to follow this last clue, ready to uncover the full extent of the surprise her husband had planned for her all along. She drove through familiar streets until they became less known and the houses around her more sparse. Eleanor arrived at a simple, unmarked house that held the promise of fulfilling her husband's last wishes. Inside the quiet house, she was greeted by the faces of a young family. A couple with a toddler looked up, surprise etched on their features at the sight of an unexpected visitor. Can we help you? They asked. Eleanor's voice trembled as she introduced herself, the key in her hand, evidence of her connection to the home and its occupants, tenants of her husband's secret life investment. The couple invited Eleanor to sit down, and over cups of tea they began to unravel the story her husband had left untold. They spoke of a benefactor, kind, anonymous, and generous, who turned out to be the man Eleanor had married. His secret support for this family was a testament to a side of him she never knew. A chapter of his life kept hidden until now. The existence of this other family, sprung from her husband's earlier life, was a wound that throbbed freshly. She began to understand the man she had loved had complexities and dimensions she had never shared, and with this understanding, she found room in her heart for forgiveness. The couple, understanding the house's significance, offered it to Eleanor. It was part of her husband's plan, a final bequest to her. Eleanor walked through the rooms, each corner revealing more about the man she had thought she knew fully. As she spent more time with the family, Eleanor felt a growing sense of connection. They were, in their way, a part of her husband's world, and now, by extension, a part of hers. The couple, with tentative hope in their eyes, asked Eleanor if she would like to be part of their daughter's life. Eleanor saw the offer as a chance to build bridges and create a new chapter in the story of her family. In the following days, the couple revealed the full scope of her husband's support. There were accounts set aside for the child's education and a fund for the family's future. It became clear that her husband had not just left them a house, but a foundation for their lives. Eleanor was moved by the depth of his care and foresight. His legacy, a lasting shelter for those he loved, inspired by her late husband's secret generosity, Eleanor decided to start a charity. It would be a continuation of the kindness he had extended to the family he had loved from afar. The charity would help others, spreading the good he had done, a living memorial to the man whose love was as deep as it was complex. The more Eleanor planned for the charity, the more she understood the true measure of wealth. It wasn't in the balance of a bank account, but in the lives touched and improved by generosity. She saw her late husband's legacy not just as a sum of money, but as a wealth of giving that would continue to grow and nourish the community he had quietly supported.